So why did I tackle Suicide Squad? For me, it, it, it really became about world creation. And I've always been a comic book fan. I grew up on comics. I've loved DC Comics since I was a kid. You know, uh, Batman, Superman. Um, as I was really young, it was, it was Superman. Then I really kind of fell in love with Batman and what he represented and, and this idea of justice. And then I think as you kind of grow up, you know, maybe you identify with the villains a little bit and, and what are they about? And as a filmmaker, it's interesting. You go and you make a comic book movie, everybody loves the good guys. Everybody loves the heroes. But what's going on with the villains? And, and how do you make an audience fall in love with the villains the same way they automatically love the heroes. And, and that was, was the real test for me, was to get the audience to care about these characters that are a little bit morally complex, let's say. They're not so uh, black and white, they're more gray. Every actor sort of had their own program tailored to them um, to help them on their journey, but also part of the process is, is the rehearsal process, having them work together. Um, we rehearse pretty much every day. And sometimes we would just cover the same scene all week long and just really drill down and really build uh, that trust. You know, we put Joel through like a mini boot camp along with some of the other actors uh, to get emotionally inside the world of, of, again, of a trained military officer. So for me, you can't give the actors too much. You can't rehearse too much because no matter how much you rehearse, it's still going to be a surprise on the day. It's still going to be a surprise on set. But that's that's where the magic comes from, and that's where you then get the freedom to start ad living and adding the humor and adding the life because now they're in character. They know how these characters think. They're in their skin, and so now they can start speaking confidently as these characters. Amanda Waller, I think, is, is one of the most interesting characters in the film. Um, she's somebody from, you know, she grew up poor, she grew up in the inner city, she grew up tough, and she's someone who's, who's really bootstrapped herself, who is wicked intelligent and incredibly formidable as a person, and who can walk into the most powerful room in Washington, D.C., and manipulate anybody in that room to get what she wants. She doesn't have uh, any problem exploring the gray areas of getting things done. She's the kind of person when you absolutely have to get something done, you don't care how it's done, you get her to do it. But she's also a patriot, which is very interesting because she does have uh, boundaries. She does have uh, beliefs and, and, and it's her, her belief in the U.S. government and respect to the U.S. government that makes what she does interesting. Part of the story is this really epic romance between Joker and Harley Quinn. And it's, it's, it's a fascinating love story because is it love love, is it love hate? Is, is, you know, there's a lot of ways to argue what that relationship is and what that relationship means. Why is the Joker obsessed with her? Does he love her? If he did, could he admit that? And I think those are some of the mysteries that I think are going to be left up to the people who are watching this film to make those decisions themselves. But the Joker's role in this film, his mission, his goal, is to get his lady back, to get Harley Quinn back. And with her rolling around with the squad, things get complex. He does have an emotional life. He does want the same things we all want, which is to have a family and be happy and be loved. And the path he's chosen has, has destroyed that for him, and he's, and he's paying for it. And so, you know, over the course of the film, The Suicide Squad, you know, Will Smith has this shot at redemption, this shot at getting what he wants. Um, and he really is, in a sense, the most, uh, the most sober of the Suicide Squad. He's the guy that's kind of trying to keep everybody else in line, and, and Will plays that role to a T. You know, he's such a charismatic guy. He has a natural leadership quality to him that uh, he really eased right in, in the dead shot. I was really anxious during the initial weeks of rehearsal as they slowly started to break the ice and bond. And then once we're shooting, I look around and they're always hanging out together on set. 
off camera. And that isn't the case normally. Normally everyone pops back to their trailers, everybody disappears. Or if they're not around, I find out they're all in base camp in someone's trailer. Like like Joel's trailer seemed to be a big, uh, big you know, a crowd point. Jai's trailer. Um, they're, they're always together. They're, they seem to become inseparable. I go on Instagram and I'm like, what are you guys doing? This, what's this, you know, every weekend they're hanging out together. So they, they became lifelong friends out of this. Um, they became this posse and they became lifelong friends. Did you know that The Hateful Eight with three words is the longest title for a film directed by Quentin Tarantino? All the titles of his previous films only consisted of two words. For example, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained or Kill Bill. What's your favorite movie directed by Tarantino? Let me know in the comments below and click here for more cool videos. Thanks for watching. See ya!